When I was six years old, I experienced three seizures, was given a diagnosis of epileptic, and potentially left with long-term memory impairments. All of this I had forgotten until my last year of my undergrad. This is a story about how I forgot, I came to remember and discovered so much more than I would have ever uh, had the privilege to. Had I not been open and curious, made learning more personal, and surprisingly enough, attended lecture. <laughs> this particular class made me more aware than I'd ever been of uh, how different I, I am. It was a learning throughout development lecture, and we learned that day that uh, the hippocampi, which is important, uh, very vital in uh, memory formation, kind of turns on at around the ages of four for most of us. And if you could recollect uh, your first ever memory going back that far, uh, that's, an, that's an indication of that. So he did a survey, the prof, and we're going to do it here too. If you could raise your hand for me, uh, if you could remember something around the ages of four, maybe two, three, five, put up your hands. People that are on the live stream, you could do the same thing at home, put up your hands. <laughs> Cool, so that's a lot of us, the majority of us, and that's the first indication that, hmm, something might be wrong. And if you were one of those people as well that didn't have your hands up, you might be a little bit concerned, confused, like, why can't I remember? What's wrong with me? That what's wrong with me voice turned into a bit of a, a, a fear voice. Um, I call that voice the, the, the hypochondriac monster. It kind of looks and sounds like the uh, hormone monster from uh, Big Mouth <laughs> on Netflix. <laughs> It's my favorite TV show. And that voice uh, filled me with fear. It, it, it often turns any little symptom into a big uh, disorder or disease. But without that voice, I wouldn't have gotten to the spark of insight that ignited this whole entire journey uh, that I am still on of learning. By the way, if I were to come out with a book, it would be called Spark of Insight. And this spark of insight was no faint was no uh, very vivid recollection. It was more so a very uh, faint flashback, if you will, a tingly sensation on my scalp, uh, trying not to itch at the electrodes being placed on my forehead uh, when I was around the ages of eight. So originally in that moment in class, I could only recall a vivid memory uh, from when I was 12, but this brought me back a bit further. So it was progress, it was an aha moment. And just like Robin over here, she is, going through the same type of monitoring that any person ha having suffered from seizures would go through. Uh, EEG, which is used to monitor electrical signals, it's electroencephalography, records what might be disrupting or what might be going on, and it gives us an, uh, a good idea or understanding of uh, the brain and the electrical signals particularly. So this ignited so much more within me. Up until that moment, I had first forgotten that I had the seizures, and we're back to uh, what I had known at one point in my past, that I've had these seizures. Uh, I was uh, diagnosed with these, these, these uh, diagnosed with epilepsy and uh, a potential long-term memory impairment, but there was so much more to find out. I was in that moment kind of, uh, drenched in a, a pool of, of water, confused, uh, so many questions to ask, like what was the cause of these seizures, what impairment did it leave me with, um, and why, uh, just why, 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 a body of whys, and I uh, felt this overwhelm, uh, and how else do you deal with overwhelm you, gather or assemble uh, a team like any Marvel character would do in a movie? And this team comprised of uh, my mom, who was trying to forget and suppress uh, because of a potentially fatal ill child, uh, how concerning that would be for her. Uh, so hard conversations were had. And then with my doctor, who in that moment uh, told me how very difficult it is uh, for your medical records sometimes to follow you around, not as hard as, uh, or comparably, uh, harder than your Facebook post, your, the most embarrassing Facebook post, that follows you around all the time. <laughs> My friends for support and, of course, 
Um, uh, thanks for the profs as well that were able to answer any questions that I had about this potential impairment. And then there's, of course, the personal journey that I went through, me, myself, in the books, uh, being in the best possible place to study my own brain and mind, studying neuroscience, I was heavily invested in what I was learning. It was like looking at things through a whole new lens. What happens when you make learning personal, everything's be everything becomes more salient when you could apply it to your own life. So I was reading books, I was uh, asking questions in lecture, reading ahead, and it refueled and regenerated my uh, my interest in learning the things that I had because it was all very applicable in this uh, quest to solve for the missing puzzle piece. And as much as I was infatuated with learning and very much uh, ingrained and in, 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 in so inspired, nothing could yet quell the deep thirst that I had for, uh, you know, solving this, for, for curiosity up until my doctor called me back and he has the medical records. And that's when the last final piece came together. And so my doctor brings me to his office and he doesn't uh, read what he had, uh, read all the medical records ahead of time. So it was, uh, we were both in, at the same place. And he, I think, he, he doesn't have a great poker face either. So his jaw dropped as soon as he uh, read what he had to read. and. Then he started to, to say, Uriel, uh, you had three right body seizures uh, that seem to have been caused by neurocystic carcosis, uh, which is a larval tapeworm infection, uh, which grows a cyst, which grew a cyst in your left hemisphere, right behind the temporal parietal junction. And all of this I had to absorb. And my first question was, neurocystic or what? Could you? <laughs> repeat that all over again, and since then I've been telling people that I was bitten by a radioactive spider pig. <laughs> because basically that's what happened, is uh, I had eaten a uh, bit of infected pork, which indeed uh, filled my stomach with tapeworms, and as a as its reproductive cycle continues, it targeted my central nervous system and uh, it used my brain tissue to, to, to grow. And in, in the worst case, it could turn out like the picture on your left uh, with many cysts, but in my case, it was just one singular cyst, thankfully. Um, and for many reasons, uh, I am a, a lucky kind of survivor of this neurocystic carcosis. And the circled area on the brain to, to your right to your left, uh, is a very important part of the brain. Uh, it's circled because it's involved in language formation. And as much as I'd like to say that I wasn't impaired, maybe uh, today's lecture might be an indication of otherwise. Uh, <laughs> and there are a couple reasons why it didn't affect me as, as much as uh, it did, is because thankfully, we live in a day and age and a time where uh, I had immediate access to uh, medical support. Secondly, it happened at a great time in my life. If you're young enough, your brain is so plastic and growing. Uh, it can preserve these vital functions such as language uh, by kind of remapping itself. And a great indication of that, that these uh, areas might be moved. So your language centers that, that fire as you talk are different than mine, an indicator being that I'm left-handed and that this happened in my left hemisphere. So my left hemisphere is now my weakest hemisphere, but my right is the strongest. Everything works opposite. I had three right body seizures, left hemisphere lesion. So we're learning a lot about the brain today. And Thirdly, yeah, experience-dependent neuroplasticity. Uh, I was learning three languages simultaneously as a kid, which kind of uh, laid down a foundation, a nice cushion uh, for this blow, this, this foreign invader that kind of changed everything around. Uh, so we should continue to strive to learn as much as we can throughout life because it does have a lot of great benefits throughout. These seizures, uh, I should say, they, they do connect. Neurocystic glucosis, uh, my brain, kind of had a cyst, a fluid-filled sac right around here, and my autoimmune response, my immune response uh, sent uh, some fighter fighting cells to uh, mitigate the situation, and uh, that, that caused a bit of swelling and uh, disrupted the electrical signaling. So if you could imagine 
the spider pig venom caused the seizures, uh, and there was three. And seizures do have a bit of a, an effect on either longer term memory impairment or shorter term. So either I don't recall the moments right before and after, some people experience seizures, or a huge impairment over a, a large period of time, maybe uh, a, a, a shorter rate of decay for memory. So this is what, this is temporally graded retrograde amnesia, where the more forward you move in time, the less you, for, the less you remember about your past. And uh, I had a lot to process, uh, but all of this knowledge was thanks to my many learnings in neuroscience, and there was more learning to come. How do you process this? Your doctor just tells you uh, that, yes, you're still the same person, uh, but everything you thought was, was the way that it is is no longer, you know? The world, um, it's like this rug is taking right, right, right out from underneath me, but there is still surface underneath. So everything changed, but nothing at the same time. And how do you process information? Where do you begin? It was an existential crisis, I swear. <laughs> I have quite a few of those every so often. <laughs> I take it glass half full. Uh, it taught me a lot about myself in that we all have these blinders uh, that prevent us from seeing uh, certain things. We attenuate to only a small percentage of what's actually going on in our world. And I had these blinders that prevented me from going far back into my past. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, remember way back when and this has maybe inherently made me more of a forward thinker, uh, pushing forward into the future. And I had these strengths and weaknesses, and taking off these blinders and looking at them and processing what those strengths and weaknesses are, I think that's self-awareness when you can come to appreciate yourself fully, um, regardless of what you might call a deficit. And next up is upward social comparison. I have that hypochondriac monster still that speaks to me, but I like to kind of lower the volume knob on that by reminding myself that I am not just uh, my, me my memory capacities, I am way more. I've been able to do, uh, I was, have always been able to do a lot more, either knowing or not knowing that that was, that was a thing. And I've learned not to reduce myself to just one measure of what success might be, if that's uh, getting a mark back that was 2% below uh, what you had expected in class. Uh, or something or other, there was way more to you, and that's something I had to remind myself. And finally, make learning more personal. My goodness, the lens, if we were to see through everything uh, through a detective lens, we could highlight and bold uh, our readings in high color. We could increase our saliency and uh, more likely remember things if we're able to make learning more personal, apply it to your own life. That's the most visceral way of learning. As I'm speaking, the more I move, the more I remember for some odd reason. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, and what got me through my acute depression was remembering that forgetting is important. It's important to forget. I'm glad that we're all not great at remembering because we need to, you know, leave leave the clutter away, have some room to remember the most important things in life, the most important things we should cherish, review, recall, uh, go back to every so often. Um, and by doing so, we are more likely to remember moments like these, moments with our friends and family. Um, it's okay if you forget what you learned last semester or last year in university. Let's strive to remember the most important things, memories such as this one right here. And that ends my TED Talk. Thank you so much.